Hello, <laughs> welcome to today's episode of the Pugwalls podcast. Um, it's me, Scott, S9 Vibe, back again with our lovely co host, um, Osiris. Um, Hello. Still, still, um, still been very quiet. Ready positions this week, mate. We swap, we swap positions. We have swapped, swapped positions. <laughs> um, I've taken control of the podcast. It's it's my podcast now, and um, yeah, I've had to. Sorry, I just had to mute my. I sounded horrible on my headphones. So I just had to turn it off because it was so distracting. Um, but no, yeah. How's your how's your how's your weekend been? I know we've been good, mate. It's been good, but birthday parties, birthday children's parties. birthday parties Ooh. again. It's been <laughs> it's getting like a, a a hobby of mine now, so it's been like full on, mate. Um, but it's been good. It's been good, yeah. Other than that, though, not a great deal going on. We obviously had the uh, the chestnut raid that uh, went live on mm -hmm. Thursday night, Friday, which is yeah. good, interesting. Probably one of the easiest seven star terror raid events that we've had, in my opinion. But um, it's good right. Appleton. Yeah. Appleton, man. So coming out on pick. top. Interesting pick. Get your apples out. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's been good, mate. Nice to have Chestnut. And I'm in the process of uh, shiny hunting it at the moment. So, but I'm like, I'm like 400 eggs deep. And uh, I think it's punishment for how quick I got the, um, the Oshawa. Oh, yeah. You got that you know, one. I got that in so like, lucky with that one. Seven eggs or something like that, and I'm like, I knew there was, I knew there was payback for that. So this is, I feel like this is going to be the, the payback. So mm. we'll see. Uh, hopefully, get it soon. But yeah, mate, weekend was good. How about you? What were you up to? Not much. What did I? Yesterday was a lazy day. To be honest with you, just Saturday is just. I was hoping for nice weather. We were, we were, we were promised nice weather on Saturday. And Saturday did not. Well, we didn't get it here anyway. So. That was a bit gutting, um, but we did get it today. So I had a nice kip in the garden today. Did a bit nice. of bouldering as well today. Enjoyed the weather. You know, it's just nice to have the sun out. It makes so much of a difference. You know what I'm saying? Oh, mate, it does. Yeah, it's just like the vibe, the general vibe of life is just so much better when the sun's shining. You just feel just better. Nice. Like everything, it yeah. just makes you feel that little bit better. So, no, it was it was excellent, mate. Um, mm. But no, yeah, it's been. Uh, Another interesting week, like you said, we had the Chestnut Raid event, which was arguably one of the easiest ones. Um, your video was really useful. Um, again, people just seem... It's, you can always tend to get, like, because obviously your videos are a good indication to how much people care, at least about the raids are at the moment. Um, mm. Because a lot of people, without flexing or whatever, I don't know, a lot of people seem to come to your your channel for the raid stuff now, like you've been doing it for a long time, so you, you sort of established, you, your raid idea is good. And so you can normally tell how interested people are by the views. And the last couple, I mean, people just, they don't seem interested at all. I mean, I think the biggest problem is the fact, like, as you mentioned, they're too easy almost. And I yeah. guess there's no challenge there. So people are just like, I just, people are just like, what is the point? If you're raw, if you're, trying to build up to home. Why are you making these Pokemon so easy to catch? Like, mm. people want something interesting to happen. Like, people are so starved for content right now. Like, the least you can do is make the seven-star raids interesting, as we mentioned. Yeah. Loads of times, make it, increase the shiny chances, make it super hard. I, I don't care what they do. Just make it, you know, it's just a tale of, tale of every, the same tale every week. Where is Pokemon home? It's not here. Okay, well, we've got another Terror Raid. Oh, no one really cares about that terror raid, to be honest with you. Yeah. So it's just like, well, like, what is happening? To be honest, though, mate, I would say on the, on the back of that, I do agree with you to a certain extent. But I, th I feel like there's been a lot, like, for me personally, just like looking at the numbers on the video um, and the comments in particular, it's been a lot more engaged with than, like, previous weeks, this one, which surprised me a lot because I don't feel like Chestnut is everyone's favorite kind of starter pokemon and also you had like tears of the kingdom dropping on the friday as well so like most people are going to be preoccupied with that so i expected it to be way way worse than what it was so i was quite, i was like honestly pleasantly surprised i do think though in a way like you know i think the raid itself was easy because they the chestnut 
just didn't really wipe any of its stat buffs. So, you know, we went from the previous raid with Inteleon that had missed where you couldn't debuff any of its stats for five turns as long as that was on the field, to this one where it was like, well, just do what you want before my shield goes up because these are going to stick around for the rest of the game and it may, makes it so much easier. So whether or not they're kind of compensating that way, but like I do feel like... There has to be some point where we get a seven star raid that it that makes it so challenging for everyone like and everyone's like stumped where even something like annihilate which just week on week seems to be like a, a, yeah, an I easy saw, pick saw for like most people like, yeah annihilate man who <laughs> just did the job yeah. again the ape is just memeing its way through every seven star raid as per usual mm. i do think though the next one which will be announced a week uh, we're recording this pod on Sunday night because we've got other stuff going on this week. But I think we should get a week today, the next seven star raid announced. And I do think that'll be Del Fox. I fully believe that it'll be a fairy type. And I fully believe if it is a fairy type, Annihilate is not going to be a Pokemon you're going to be able to use into that raid. So we'll see. We'll see, mate. Yeah. We'll just, it's just, yeah. I'm tired, of, I'm tired of saying the same thing, to be honest with you. But. Again, I, I know. I think the thing is, as well, you've got to think they probably, I think this is part of a plan as well. We've briefly talked about it. When the uh, the teal mask comes out, the first DLC, there's a lot of talk about the masks that are in and have been shown in the trailers to have some sort of alternative terrestrialization hat or some sort of terrestrialization mechanic where the Pokemon that have these masks have a different look mm. and for the reasons why they've chose this string of like starter pokemon is because these starter pokemon that are in these seven star terror raid events right now before the dlc's kind of drop is because they are the ones that are going to have these special kind of mask terrestrialization whatever it's going to be yeah, yeah, yeah. and i do think that 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 makes sense but you got to think like after this phase which Hopefully, will be the Del Fox the Rilla Boom that'll finish the first phase with these hats in mind. Then we might get some more interesting terrorades. I do think the Hisuian form uh, Pokemon in the Hisuian forms will be very difficult because some of those Pokemon are like absolutely busted. Ursulana, you've got um, some like the Hisuian Samurott, which is just going to be busted in uh, competitive because of some of the moves that it's got. And there's a, there's a bunch of other ones like Sneasler as well. Going to be really scary Pokemon. And they've got to at some point, you think they have to do like a legendary, like something like a Mewtwo. Now imagine like Mewtwo in a seven star turret. That thing's going to be so scary because you're not going to be able to bring an Eyelip against a Mewtwo. I, I personally don't think that part fighting weakness that you've got there is going to be like you have Rage Fist for sure. But Mewtwo stats are like ridiculous. And also you've got, I will throw in as well, obviously in the anime this week, the new anime, we had Roy's Pokeball revealed oh, yeah, and it that. opened up the pendant doing its thing with it and Rick shiny Rayquaza came out of it, it like and it an wasn't ancient, like a, an ancient ball I saw yeah yeah it's crazy like yeah I have no idea I hope it gets featured in the DLCs I hope they tie it in somehow and there's some tie to Rayquaza in with it because Rayquaza in it like um I think Light made a really good twi Twitter post about it where he was like he did um how it was more crystallized but it didn't have a ter terrestrialization hat or anything like that but it was more crystallized yeah, I noticed that as than well. your regular Rayquaza and also when it vanished at the end of the the, the episode it vanished like uh, a terror when you beat a, yeah, yeah, a yeah, terror yeah. pokemon and it vanishes so I thought oh, there's a connection there so imagine a seven star Rayquaza raid I think man and it's probably got some mechanic as well yeah, can you imagine if it's got a mechanic where, you know, like Mega Rayquaza didn't have to hold a Mega Stone to Mega Evolve. It just needed Dragon Ascent. Oh, no way. Imagine if they bring in some mechanic where it can terrestrialize into, well, I don't know, how they oh. would work something. <laughs> imagine, like, do you remember when you could put, wait, could you could you put a Z, like a, could you still Z, use a Z move on, on Mega Rayquaza or not? I think so. Yeah, you must have been able to, yeah. So... If you could stack <laughs> a terrestrialized Mega Rayquaza with a Z move or some, you know, some, they do something down the yeah. line where there's like another gimmick where you just Man. stack all of these and you're just like. <laughs> just sick Rayquaza. But this is what I mean. I think like it's a, 
it's probably not a bad thing where Pokemon is like they, there has been some challenging seven stories, but nothing that's been like too difficult within like an hour or two for players to figure out. Like it, you know, after a bunch of testing, you go into the raid, you see what the moves are. It's easy enough to kind of like figure out, especially when you know when they're going to nullify stat boosts or kind of nullify um, their own debuffs or anything like that. You can figure out ways to get around it. And like I say, two hours maximum, probably you figured out a really good strategy to go into it. But I think the this kind of phase, I keep calling it phase one of these seven star raids, which I really fully believe it is. I think this is maybe like the warm up section for the player base to be like get yourself ready because so you, got me really you need to get yourself like, you need to get yourself in gear because what is coming next is going to be a complete but, shock but again, to your system right, maybe <laughs> these feel really easy because we've had because remember when the game dropped right i specifically remember you dming me and be like damn these these raids are hard i remember when you did <laughs> yeah. six star raids but like, these five and six star raids these are well hard but mm. maybe it's gotten to a point now where obviously we're so used to raids, going like kind of what you were just saying of them us getting used to this first phase, because we we're so used to them now. We know exactly how they work, how the shields work, how yeah. the debuffs work. You know, it just doesn't seem easy. Maybe that's why everything seems so easy. Obviously, some are going to be slightly harder than others because of the typing and their 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 like own stats and stuff like that. You know, you're not going to be able to get past that. But that's a re- I think it's a really good point. Worth mentioning, mm. but maybe maybe it's just because we're so used to the seven star raids at this point, and maybe they maybe they maybe the the legendary ones eight star raids, you know, like if maybe, you're increasing mate. the difficulty, why not add another star on there? You know, who knows as well? Because you know, like most of them as well uh, that we've had so far don't have items and so none of them are taking advantage of having a held item which is a huge thing if any of you play competitive pokemon you'll know how impactful like held items are we've had one raid which was the pikachu one which was a, a kind of a, a a pokemon day special seven star raid event and that was the only one that had an, a held item so we know the possibilities are there for these pokemon to have held items so you think like okay well Let's chuck in something extra on top of that to make it difficult. Like I say, I think, yeah, I think it's going to like take a turn. I honestly expected the chestnut to be a lot harder than it was. But um, I guess as well, if they are trying to bed players in, like you say, for them to get used to this kind of format, then it makes sense to not make them too difficult. No. But see mate it is exciting though the possibilities you think like if they start bringing in these legendaries for these raids and stuff like the the dlc could be so sick like they have the potential like because if you if you if you forget about everything else right about scott do you want to zoom your camera in just a little bit i know you did it earlier just because you zoomed out just a little bit just um like if because if you look at scarlet and violet that's it that's the one nice and sexy there we go if you look at Scarlet and Violet as a base game, right, it's actually a really mm. cool game. Like, forget about all the problems with it running or whatever. Like, in terms of gameplay, it's really cool, right? And it's just like, you just think about that, you know. Pokemon has done some cool stuff in the past. As we mentioned, we've been we've been gagging for some more interesting stuff. And, mm. you know, maybe thinking about the Terror Aids, right? We're talking about this. They 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 basically trolled them in Sword and Shield, right? Because they had they had the Terror Aid events, but we didn't have this kind of level of terror aids, right? Did we? So it would make sense for them to be ramping them up slowly, especially if we like for the. It would make like when the DLC DLC comes out, it would maybe it would make sense for the natural progression to be oh DLCs have eight star raids, you know, and, that, and that's where we That'd get all these really hard Pokemon. And yeah. They again, like it's just it's just where, whatever direction they go with it, you know, how how good is this DLC going to be? Because if it has all their stuff that we just discussed, it could be really awesome, you know? Suddenly, you know, that could be the way we get all the legendary Pokemon. We get these really hard, like, terror raids. And it'd yeah. be sick because it means that some people can't get them. Like, it just adds to the rarity of the Pokemon because in previous games, you can just catch capture them quite easily. Yeah. It's not really a challenge, right? You had the... In the Dimensional Rift thing, was it in Sword and Shield? where you could get the Pokemon, or was that Sun and Moon? That was Ultra Sun and Moon. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it's just like... But it was basically, my point is, it, it was easy to get the Pokemon, right? People, yeah. It is a kid's game at the end of the day, but why not make it a bit challenging? They're, clearly they're trying to ump, 
up the ante, right? Because a child, without being mean to a child, a child wouldn't be able to just work out a seven star raid without watching a YouTube video or something. Like they're not just gonna be like, oh, I can do this, like on a regular playthrough, you know? So it just, no, just you... making me think, you know, this seems like something they could actually re they could do. Yeah. I mean, even for like the seven star raids, I don't really think you can go into them and not, uh, you know, change the nature of your Pokemon. You've got to optimize it for EVs. You've got to optimize the IVs. So there's a bunch of things that you still need to do now to like make sure that you can beat these things. So like if they go like an eight star raid, yeah, that's going to be, that's like where I think the, the crossover from like the basic stuff that you need to do with your EV and IV and good move set to actually have a full fledged strategy against it and maybe it gets to the point where you can't do it on your i would love to see it get to the point where you can't do it on your own in game where you have to go online and you have to have a team of players to kind of say right well we Such all need to pull show. together <laughs> yeah you know what i mean though well, i think that would be right, really though, cool because if they increase the yeah. level even more you're gonna to have to find a way of doing it yourself you could probably do I'd imagine soloing it, you could probably get really close, but you're not going to be able to do it. And I think it, but then they'd have to come up with like a better way. Because I feel like I think there'd have to be ways to solo in game because I think then like for those well, players, the that, online, you know, the online a lot, they need to make it more more inclusive because you can't go online and do raids with other players unless you've got like the online subscription. You can get the raids without it. Well, there's that in your game, and also, you know, if you've got you like that, there needs to be a way to communicate or something. Like, if you're going online, my point is, there needs to be some sort of advantage, should I say, because yeah. to an extent, or something that will help aid in the process. Because playing with mm. randoms is hard, right? Which <laughs> the more I think about it, the harder it's gonna like. I don't think they'll do something like that, but you know, I would really like to see a really hard terror raid, I think it would be awesome. But that's what we need game freak get you, on it when you mentioned about the hisuian pokemon before can you yeah. um trade them over from legends arceus or not is that not tradable yeah. yet it is tradable yeah that, they've, it's legends arceus has had compatibility with pokemon home for a while now but do so. you but do you not think if they just release home like why would they then do hisuian pokemon i think <gasps> they would do it uh, to make everyone able to get the Hisuian Pokemon because oh, yeah, if you, yeah, 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 the yeah, only yeah, yeah. way for you to get them is it's by buying guy. Legends Arceus. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think last week actually there was um there was some interesting numbers come out about the games and it doesn't put much hope in my corner for us getting another Legends game because I think the numbers sold so far for Legends Arceus after a year is about fourteen point fourteen point six million copies, which sounds a lot, but when you put it in comparison with like the Let's Go games, it's it's pretty close to the let's go games and they haven't done a, a sequel to that so it's like based on those numbers are they going to invest in doing a sequel to legends Arceus? which makes me really sad if they don't because like i know i've said a million times on the pod how much i love legends Arceus, and i would love to have another legends game in the you know I, the thing the, is i wouldn't put it past but... them to try something else right like you know we had the let's go series right i mean mm. that wasn't really much of a it was a different art style, you know. It was a, like it was it was a way to rake in on the Gen One nostalgia, as they love to do. We've mentioned that many times, obviously, but I feel like you know they tried that. Obviously, you know, wasn't really too different, so it was a pretty safe play, to be honest. Yeah. And they've done Legends, like it wouldn't like the idea of them doing trying something else. You know, I wouldn't put it past them. Is is my point? You know, they could try something slightly different. Or like adapting it. I mean, the world's there also. They can do whatever the hell they want, man. They've got so much mm. bloody money. It's just like, I, it's just yeah. It's just whether they get to the point where they care. I mean, we could, like I said, we could be, you know, a hindsight's a bitch. We could be eating our words. You know, the DLC could be amazing. Home could come out. Everyone would because once home's out, everyone will just like, just forget about the fact that it hasn't come out for ages. That's exactly what happens. <laughs> Whenever stuff's oh, yeah, delayed, be, yeah. people just yeah. all of a sudden there's no honor complaints because it's just there. People are just mm. happy that they have it, and I think they know yeah. that. Like, okay, yeah, they've got a bit of pushback, but all it's gonna do is be like, okay, when home does drop, there is gonna be a lot of hype. 
you know. And I so, think like you've mentioned before, I think it's not going to be like just home dropping. I think they're going to drop a bunch of stuff around it. So it's going to be like everyone's going to be like, oh, we've got a new trailer. We've got new information about the DLCs. We've got Pokemon Home. We've got this new event happening where if you trade from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet to Pokemon Home, you're going to get like the hidden ability starter Pokemon in your games. And it's so it's going to, like you said, there's going to be so much stuff where it's just this like hype up the the DLCs, what's going on currently, potentially new seven star raid or whatever, uh, mystery gifts alongside it. I think, yeah, it's going to be all forgotten about and uh, all rosy in the garden again. It will be, 100%. 100%. Yeah. They'll just release something special that people will eat up and they'll be like, oh, yes, give it to me. Like the seven, <laughs> it'll be like a seven, it'll be like the seven star Rayquaza and people are like, yes, that'll do. <laughs> and then it. they'll just forget everything that ever happened. Yeah. It's interesting though that we're talking about this. The um, the the leaks that have come out in regards to Pokemon Home I was kind of indicate. Do you want to talk about? Yeah. Talk about uh, well, have you got the Centro one? Because I think the Centro one that Centro put out yeah. at the earlier in the week, kind of on the back of obviously Riddler Coup is a more reliable leaker source. Centro is pretty reliable, but um, Centro obviously has uh, their own source with with Pokemon Home. Uh, because they were pretty nailed on with the the updates and the leaks that they put out with Sword and Shield the last mm. time, so and BDSP and Legends Arceus. So it turns out from these leaks, if you believe them, um, that, that it's going to be ha- Pokemon Home for the very first time. It's going to have the ability to trade Pokemon from Scarlet and Violet into Pokemon Home, and then you're going to be able to trade these Pokemon into previous generations. Obviously, if if you've got Fiococo or Quaxley, you're not going to be able to trade them into Sword and Shield because they don't exist in Sword and Shield. But if you've got a Pikachu, for example, in uh, Scarlet and Violet, you can then trade that into Sword and Shield for the very first time, which is pretty cool. Is pretty and there's going, to be some, uh, there's going to be some tinkering with how Pokemon's moves get deleted. I think you had the, the tweet up there before. Um, and there's been a list compiled. So basically how we understand moves to be deleted will be working is uh, if a pokemon is traded in scarlet and violet and it it's if it's got one move on its move set that can't be uh, learned in scarlet and violet the entire move set will be deleted it'll be reset so even if the three other moves are what that pokemon can learn they'll still get reset because of that one move and then they're only going to have a set like they're going to have a brand new like learn set to Scarlet and Violet. So they'll learn some of the moves that they could previously learn, but a lot of the stuff like that they got from previous generations won't be accessible anymore um, going forward. So that's, and there's this list compiled by um, Roy Dadadu, uh, which is amazing. So I would advise, we'll, we'll stick it in the description, a link to this uh, Google sheet. And you can go through it if you want, because it's going to be really useful for like competitive players and things like that, where you can have a look at what, Pokemon's learn sets will be when they're traded in from Pokemon Home to um, to Scarlet and Violet, and there's a bunch of uh, different examples as you go through them and all the, all the Pokemon doctrine. that you can trade in. And I think there'll be around nine. Is a 92 Pokemon that are initially going to be able to be traded into Scarlet and Violet, and then obviously when the DLCs drop, you'll be able to trade ahead. more in. So, yeah, 88. Oh, well, as cl- as close as We've, close. Um, just as like a naive person for a second. Just mm-hmm. this question just come to my head. As much as I think that is a very cool feature that they would add, what benefit does it have? Like, why would you want to transfer a Pokemon from Scarlet and Violet to Sword and Shield? Like, what, like, what, what would that do for you? Can you think of any reason why you'd want to trade down a Pokemon? Hmm. Prob- probably not, to be honest. Unless I like, I, unless I was, I. I'm probably the wrong person to ask because I don't really like the main series titles. I generally don't go back and play them, at least the recent ones. Like, I haven't touched Sun and Moon since we went past Sun and Moon. I have, I've rarely been back into Sword and Shield. I think the only time I've been to Sword and Shield... What? Yeah, I've been into it maybe once or twice. So I haven't really touched Sword or Shield. Uh, BDSP I haven't really been in but I would be more inclined to go and play BDSP probably uh, than I would anything else I think that the the cool thing is you could probably do this that you could trade in a Pokemon to like Legends Arceus which might be quite fun to do but 
you know, it just gives you, the, I think, the option to be able to kind of trade Pokemon around all the titles rather than just keep them locked into they're either in the new game or they're either in home. You know what I mean? So they're kind of locked in that dungeon, whereas you can pull them into other games that you want to play with and stuff like that, which is kind of cool, to be honest. Um, but I'm the I'm I'm literally the the wrong person to ask. I think the only game that I really play outside of Scarlet and Violet, Pokemon wise, is recent games would be Legends Arceus. I play that quite a bit still. And then I'm playing more of like the the really old ones, man, the classic stuff. Like I'm playing through Red again at the minute. Um, Re release <laughs> the old games. Yeah. And I'm still on the hunt for uh Pokemon Emerald. <laughs> so hard to get a hold of a, a copy without absolutely paying a fortune for it and i know i'm gonna have to pay a bit more for it i've got one but we might find one, um, one if we go oh that's you definitely that's true, able to yeah. find one you might even be able to find a boxed yeah. one but you might play that would be nice or oh, box will be you'll definitely be able to find one though because there'll be loads of stalls that have stuff yeah and it'll all be genuine oh, you would hope it would be genuine the amount of fake copies on ebay mate you've got to be have so I told you my switched store, on my uh fake gba pokemon sapphire story no. I was in tears. So I bought a pair. So I bought. When I was younger, my first Pokemon game was Diamond and Pearl, right? And this is mm. why Gen 4, a lot of people my age, you know, you always have this. You always see these graphics of which is your favorite generation. And it's basically which people are born within this this time frame because it, that's when that game comes out, right? So, Diamond and Pearl is my favourite. Gen 4 is my favourite because it's my first Pokemon game. It's always it's, it's always the way. Objectively, yeah. Gen 3 is actually really good. I really like Gen 3. And so, my second Pokemon game that I ever played was a copy of Pokemon Sapphire. And I can't remember where, where I got it from, but um, had it, loved it. Played it through. Um, I think I played it on... I had a Game Boy. I went and bought a Game Boy or borrowed my cousins they had a pink old game where I, was like, I just used that to play it loved it you know i caught everything and i had like a you know at the time i thought it was really cool i had like a high level blazer kid i had kyoga i had Raquaza. i went through i remember the first time like going on youtube trying to work out how to catch all the reggies i thought that was so awesome I had all the reggies and i even somehow managed to catch latias which is so hard to do in these old games and i got it and um you know completed the game got all that i was like yes this is it and I was like, I need to trade these to my, you know, copy of um, Pokemon Diamond, right? Oh, no. And I've plugged it in the bottom. I've gone to the transfer, and it's and it's wiped the cart. Yeah, and it I, wiped it. It wiped the cart, right? And I'm sitting, no. I'm sitting on my bathroom floor. I don't know why I was in the bathroom, oh, like crying, because like, I've just lost oh. everything. And I was like, holy shit, it's a fake game. And then I like looked it up, and obviously because it didn't have the shiny sticker. Yeah, and it's like it was a fake one. I was, I was, I was devastated, man. Like it's the first time. Obviously, I just didn't know, and it just completely wiped it. And I went back onto the game, just like started the game again. I was like, "Fuck!" Oh, that so is annoying. Actually, so gutting, mate. After all that time, that is the worst case scenario. Yeah, there's so many fakes out there. There's some good tells though. To like some of the fakes are getting really good, but there's some really good tells you can look for. If you're looking for GBA games in particular, like Emerald will have two number indents on the on the front of the sticker. There'll be like two number indents. Like you'll not be able to see them, so the lighting has to be good. But that's a really good tell. Uh, the chipboard as well is a good tell. There's like some of the fake chipboards don't look anything like obviously what an official one will look like. And you can see that if you just get a picture of the, the back of the card because it's a bit translucent, you know, because it's like that green see-through. So you can you can tell quite quickly if it's, if it's a fake. Um, and there's a few other things as well. Obviously the labeling, the positioning of like um, the Nintendo, like seal of approval, stuff like that, the wording on it as well. Uh, some, but there's so many fakes out there, man. And the fakes, people obviously uh, sell for silly money as well, you know? Like, it's like, and I'm sure it's horrible because I, I know people probably will be buying them thinking they're genuine. They're not, like, educated on, on the fakes and stuff like that, and they'll have similar situations to you, which is re which really sucks. So, uh, it's annoying. It's annoying, man. Yeah, sorry, I'm just smiling because the mic... Shadow is casting over your eyes and it looks like you look a bit like Batman. I need to move it out. I am Batman. <laughs> Batman. There we go. Is that better? Yeah. You can see my face. No, <laughs> like, 
slinking into the shadows. <laughs> Basically. No, I've got... I don't have any of the boxes, but I've, I'm pretty sure I've got legit copies of... The only two games I'm missing of all the old games mm. are so, uh, Silver, Pokemon Silver, and Leaf Green. Yeah, I've got I have got all the green. others. I've got all I the others. I would love Leaf Green. The fun fact about Fire Red and Leaf Green is the other games as well, like, uh, you know, like you get the internal battery issues with like all the older games. Yeah, yeah. Like Red, Blue, Yellow, uh, Gold, Silver, Crystal, uh, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald all have internal batteries. Emerald, I think uh, Emerald does run when its battery goes down, but the in-game like like events that would happen based on time just don't work. So the the save still works, I'm pretty sure. But Fire Red and Leaf Green have like flash saves on them, oh, so wow. they're not like a, a battery. So that's why they're like a lot better to pick up if you want to play some of the older games, in my opinion anyway. So they're pretty cool. But I haven't got, yeah, I haven't got Leaf Green. I'd love that as well. But oh, there's some convincing well, fakes of those. I've really? seen some convincing fakes like with the boxes as well that like you you're like and it's just when you look at it in a certain light and you think it's got too much of a glossy kind of look to it to be like we'll have, uh, to, we'll have to have a look at my, my games one week maybe mm. next week because i've got them all up in a box that'd be fun now. yeah but oh yeah. yeah so but no it's um yeah release them it's the third episode in a row we've asked for them to release a classic game but <laughs> how many episodes are we going to get just gonna how keep, many hundreds are we going to go yeah um just a bit of a tangent talking about the switch console um yeah they uh someone saw on reddit thought it was interesting they've sold 125 million units and we have a nice little comparison here compared to the ds and the wii u and for wow. all of them and you can see the numbers there it's basically it's close to double what the 3ds sold worldwide which is pretty That's wild, nice, isn't it? And look at like compare that to the Wii U as well. I mean, how doodoo was the Wii U? Bless him, like a thirteen million units. Wow! And then like the Wii, million. look how many the Wii sold, and the Go DS. Down, I can't Jesus! See. Oh, you can't see. Yeah, look, look at these numbers for the. We sold wow. one hundred one million for people listening in audio. Sorry, I realised you can't see that. Um, we sold one hundred one million units. The Nintendo DS sold one hundred fifty four million units worldwide. That's massive. Game Boy Advance, 81 million. The original Game Boy, 118 million. That seems like a lot, considering how old that is, yeah. like hardware-wise. How much did the the, uh, the 64 sell? Uh, the 64 was 300... No, sorry, 32 million. 300, I thought you were going to say. I was yeah, like, yeah. what? 32 million is not a big number, is it, compared to these ones? No, no, which is very weird. And the GameCube... And the GameCube. GameCube is even lower. 21 million units. That's mad, isn't it? The Wii so U, the man. Switch. The Wii U did the literal worst out of every release they had of a console. So the Wii U Wait, had what? 13 million units sold worldwide. <laughs> and the lowest, oh the God. second lowest was the GameCube. That's that is crazy. wild to me. It is wild because the GameCube for me was such a. I love. Is the it GameCube. such an iconic console? Like it has the best yeah, version of. I love it. Does it have the best Smash or was that sixty four? Uh, it has. Uh, the sixty four was the first Smash, and then you had. Um, What's the one that everyone plays? That's one on GameCube, right? Yeah. 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 yeah was so that Brawl? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. No, it wasn't Brawl. Brawl was Wii, wasn't it? So it was. I can't remember, but the one on the GameCube was the one, yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, I just thought that was super interesting. Just uh, I'd never seen this graphic before, so this is actually all I'll have to me. dig this out. I got a fun fact about uh, Super Smash Bros. on the 64. I wish I continued playing it like as much as I did when it first came out, um, but because I didn't know about any competitive scene at the time when I was playing it, when it got released, I just kind of migrated over more to Pokemon because... There's more of a competitive scene and there was more online for me to like, there was, um, you know, battle simulators online that I could go on and, and talk with friends and battle online. So I just kind of naturally gravitated towards that. But with Super Smash Bros, um, I absolutely loved it, mate. Played it relentlessly after it got released. It was like one of my favorite games for the 64. And I've got a Nintendo magazine, official magazine somewhere where I've got this uh, record of um, the the Pikachu run in in that game 
where uh, I got the quickest time. For, I can't remember what it was involving. I think you had to collect like little lightning balls. It's been so many years since I played it, but you had to record it. I had to record it on VHS. I had to get my dad to like hook my 64 up to uh, a like video player and um, then ask for capture. a blank oh, tip. Is- yeah, and then ask him to help me record it, and then I had to post that to the official magazine as proof that I'd done it in this time. And then, um, yeah, and then I got was in the the um, the list. It's crazy. I've got the magazine with it. My parents will have to dig it out. But it was my little claim to fame with Smash Bros. Sorry, throw it in there. Getting back to your point though about the consoles, the Switch is. That's nuts figures, mate. I'm surprised that the, uh, the the DS, though, the DS sales are amazing as well, really, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it kind of revolutionised portable gaming right? the DS, so it makes sense. Mm. Um, yeah. But just on... I'm so surprised at those low numbers, though, of some of the other cons. Yeah. I, th- I knew the Wii Wii U was bad, but I didn't think it was that bad. No. But... Um, the Wii U sold well, though. What was that, 101 mil? No, you mean the regular Wii. Yeah, uh, 100, the, 101, yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah, on the topic of uh, Switch, I mean, we spoke about potential successor. I mean, we've seen the graphics. It's normally they normally work on a seven-year cycle. Um, and a Switch come out in twenty sixteen. I think it was announced in twenty fifteen. Come out in sixteen. So we're due one basically at this point. We are due, and um, they've basically confirmed that there's not one happening for a while. I mean, that's what they say. Mm. Whether or not they're lying, we don't know. But uh, Nintendo liars. <laughs> Nintendo says the Switch successor is not happening for at least another year. Wow, is that a year for until its release, or a year until its announcement? Won't be released until April twenty twenty four at the earliest. So they can't. So it could see, still come out next would, year, basically, which was our original me, would theory. Have been like, yeah, I would have thought that would have been like the kind of the timeline anyway. Yeah. So spring 2024. That's quite exciting though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I guess it Yeah, maybe they again, maybe they're just trying to give themselves some more breathing room. Yeah. Has put a stop to rumors about its new hardware, whether it's long rumored Switch Pro or otherwise, by declaring that a Switch successor won't be released until April twenty four, at April twenty twenty four at the earliest. Unless they so want to make w- sure that they've got enough. Um, maybe it comes down to stock, because they've definitely maybe. got the console at this point. There's no way they don't. I don't believe that they haven't got it sorted at this point. It's been like almost eight years at this point. Um, because I'm pretty sure, because uh, I think I mentioned on the last podcast, uh, Asus recently released their portable handheld as a competitor to the Steam Deck that had their uh, Z1 chip, which was apparently slated for them and the Nintendo, this special chip. And it's really powerful, um, but no one really knows. It was just a rumour that it was made for Nintendo as well. Mm. Um but, there was that rumour that we covered a few weeks ago. It was that new Tegra chip. Yeah, there's also was, that as well. Yeah. But I mean... But supposedly, we'll be going into it, but... I guess when the sales... The sales are still going strong, right? So why would you release another console? But they they need to take the yeah. leap at some point because the and hardware they've, is they've, so far behind, right? Yeah, and they've obviously got absolute factory, factories, warehouses full of OLED switches because that's why they're doing all these... Fancy OLED Switch edition. Yeah, they must do. Like the, the next one, yeah, must have a. That would actually makes a lot of sense, you know. Yeah. Because they must, yeah, they must have loads of them. So like, oh, we'll just, we've got loads of OLED screens now. Let's do an OLED version. <laughs> Don't actually change Let's anything do, else. Uh, Splatoon. Oh yeah, we'll do Pokemon after that, and then yes, we've got yeah, Twilight. Uh, the, Tears of the Kingdom is not coming out on the Switch too. It's coming out on the Switch, and we're gonna do these OLED models. It's a special edition with it. So what will be next? But yeah, I think that's probably not along the lines. I tell you what, mate, I haven't really mentioned it at all, but playing Tears of the Kingdom on this system really, really highlights. The, Is yeah, it bad? The, well, even on the, the OLED flaws. that you have? Mate, it's beautiful, mate. It's beautiful. But it, I, what I mean is it highlights what... Uh, 
how trash the a bad is. job Pokemon have done with oh, I see. Oh, yeah. yeah, because if that runs as that smoothly runs. as it does on this console and looks as good, and you think, like, going from that, going from Tears of the Kingdom into Scarlet and Violet, it's a big eye opener, at least it was for me anyway. Going from playing Tears of the Kingdom and then doing the seven star raid for the chestnut, I was like, oh, oh. Doesn't matter too much to me, like personally, on a personal level. I don't really care about that too much because I enjoy the games for what they are. It would be nice if they looked as beautiful as Tears of the Kingdom. And I know they're never going to because it's comparing Pokemon to Zelda, which is just not something that you should really make a comparison of. But the baseline is. The, the possibilities of making Scarlet and Violet that good is definitely there. And the reasons for all of these issues that they've had doesn't really make too much sense. So Zelda have had a lot longer to uh, develop their game, I guess, and get all the kinks out. Like, but, well, there's also this, they had to get it right with Zelda. They didn't have to get it right with Pokemon. If they, no. if they got it wrong with Zelda, like they were fucked, basically. They were really screwed because... Mm. They know people, as we've mentioned, people are going to keep buying Pokemon games, people are going to keep buying Pokemon stuff. It's not going to hurt their IP, basically, but if they released a Zelda game that actually was doo-doo, they would, it would hurt their IP a lot. So Yeah, because it is their one game per... Kind well, that of is kind of all cycle. they have as well, right? They have the games. Yeah. They don't have yeah. any other parts of the IP that they make money from. So with Pokemon, mm. oh, no, the game's crap. Oh, anyway, buy these new fancy Pokemon cards. You know, they don't have co- yeah. training cards for like Zelda. Like, it's just the game, right? They have the. We just bought out this brand new giant plushie. Yes. They have, yeah. you know, they, okay, they have, they might be able to do a few bits of merch, but nothing compared to like the stuff no. that Pokemon can do, you know? They ha- Bro, did you see the. I got, I got it here. The, the oh collector's God, it's so case. It's huge. Man, I was like, what is in is it? What is in it? There's, like a, there's an illustrator book, which is epic. You've Luke. got a big poster in it. I'll just turn it around. I'll show you. You can get like, there's some like, there's loads of little things that you get in, in the box. Oh, nice. Uh, and the game, of course. And you said it wasn't game. much more expensive than the regular. When I pre-ordered it, it wasn't, mate. And then I looked at the cost of these about two weeks ago. And it was like, for the collector's edition, it was nearly double what I paid for it Jesus. originally. when Because I ordered it the day it dropped. Um, and it had a price guarantee with it. So, yeah. But honestly, I got home from work and I was like, "What is this box?" I was like, "I haven't ordered anything this big." I was like, "Where's my, where's my copy of, where's my collector's?" I was honestly expecting it to be like a, just a little bit bigger than the normal Switch box in a little box. And I was like, "What is this?" And then it opened it, and honestly, I nearly had a heart attack because I was like, "Oh my god, they've sent me the OLED Switch edition by mistake." I was like, "Bonus!" I was like, "Cause just the sheer size of it." And then I, I obviously opened it up a bit more, and I was like, "Man, this is nuts big." But um, yeah, it's cool. So excellent. It's uh, nice to have anyway. I just don't. I'm like, I'm pretty stuck for space on my shelves. I'm like. This is a big bit of kit. It? Like, where am I putting it? Yeah, mm. so... Never mind. Please have got it, though. No, it looks really nice. I saw a lot of people. I saw your tweet about it as well. But uh, yeah, I'm sure they shocked... Like, I'm sure they trolled a lot of people with that box. Yeah. Uh, I am... Um, I got it a day early, though. It arrived on the Thursday. So if I hadn't had been that. at work... If I wasn't at work on Thursday, I would have had it at about um, 11 o'clock in the morning. So I would have had, like, a whole extra day to play it. So I know the game's leaked online like a week a week and a half before yeah yeah yeah. i think two weeks early i think that the game's leaked it's had incredible reviews like yeah every, like every place i know is giving it 10 out of 10 basically which Smart. is crazy yeah i know you're not long into for, those sort of games the day but... we'll get we'll get a 10 out of 10 on a pokemon game <laughs> and ig doesn't knock us down for a game that is built around water and the legendary is being is a water it's basically a wow and then knocking it down for having too much water too much water do you remember the iGem review when Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire come out they knocked they knocked points off for there being too much water like it was the region the game you idiots (laughs) (laughs) it didn't change anything oh I know 
I loved it. Those remakes were great. Best remakes we've had so far, hands down. I mean, oh, we have hot so gold or silver, mate. I oh think. yeah, I forgot about that. But that was a long and time you get ago. The, I don't remember playing. It was, yeah. Thing. And you get the you got the poker walker with those as well. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay, Stop. you know you won me over with that. Um, um, but yeah, I think I don't know if we'll ever get a ten out of ten Pokemon game. Have we ever had a class one? So hot gold or silver must have been class. I reckon it would have been a nine out of ten. I don't know. We we'll have to have a look. It's probably not a nine out of ten, right? Is it? It's probably not. It's not a 9 out of 10. Maybe an 8 out of 10. I'd like to think it would be a 9 out of 10. It's a very good Pokemon game. Mm -hmm. so, so, uh, but then when you start kind of like rating it against other titles, it's it's hard to, to argue. Like Zelda's getting like a 9 or a 10 out of 10. So what IGN gave it? Igin. Igin gave it. Igin. Igin. Igin gave it. Uh, Igin gave it a... Eight and a half. Ooh, that's pretty good. Most of the reviews are pretty good for Soul Silver. Nintendo Life gave yeah. it eight, uh, nine out of ten. Metacritic nice. gave it eighty-seven percent. So, pretty standard stuff. But pretty no, good. no, we'll see, we'll see. Maybe what? Maybe when will the next game? It maybe makes you think, though. Game. Genuinely, like if Saw Scarlet and Violet run really well, would this have got like? so much praise would it be like oh my god this is the best everyone needs to buy this game now no I don't think it would have you don't think I don't think it would have got much more than what it got I think there would have just been a lot less noise around the issues um, I think they need to bring in like voice acting yeah. like they need voice acting instead of just having the text. I think that that's the next thing to enhance it a little bit more, you know. Mm. I think if they had that in, in Scarlet and Violet, it would have made it way more appealing. Oh, did you but... ever play um, Professor Light, Pro Professor, the Professor Layton series? They used no. to have like, I guess it's the same for any game, but they used to have these cut, little sick cut scenes before boss, before like really important parts of the story. Yeah. They were only like 30 seconds long. But stuff like that would be like, I know we kind of have them, but like just like an actual anime style cutscene, not like the, cool. not like the in-game graphic crap, like yeah. an actual like it just adds just little things. Like yeah, that that. I love stuff like that. I'll have to ask my dad about the Professor Layton stuff because he he great, loves. I like uh, great. Games. I remember for like years, like every Christmas and birthday, I'd be like, get my new Professor Layton game. He was like well into them. I actually haven't finished the one they released one on the Switch. I haven't actually finished it yet, but um, I haven't played any of them, mate. You're not but he's got all of them. So really good. So I could uh, I could go and could borrow them permanently <laughs> <laughs> and acquire his DS at the same time. Be like, I'm just borrowing this. Just a uh, just a quick one before mm. I forget. We had another bit of rumor news you had to hear from um, Riddler Coup. I don't know. Oh yeah. Um, what this is about. So it's, so it's a long line of his kind of um, leaks, I guess, or hints or riddles in regards to Pokemon Home. And it's just kind of um, like continuation, because I think we talked about them last week. So uh, the move tailor is the how the moves, we've touched on that already. In oh, is that what you meant? Oh, okay. Video. So he, he put this out um, earlier you know like the the way that he's kind of saying like so the first tweet that he put out move taylor kiss um and then his second tweet after that for anyone listening turns out that old money won in the end uh truth of the world so the old uh old money um i think it's a new turns out old money won in the end i think he's referring to the fact that when you're trading in pokemon to the new games all that old um, all that old moves are going to be deleted pretty much. I think that's what it's referring to. And then the 3.0 is, I think, the home update, which will take us to in Scarlet and Violet, or maybe the home uh, update. I'm not too sure which one it is. Um, but yeah, you can kind of follow along from the whole thread about the, the coup riddles. And it all goes back to that 19th. If it had been the 19th week, it would have been last week when we got Pokemon Home. 19th week of the year. So it wasn't last week uh, that we've had. So the 19th is the next prediction is going to be like the 19th of May, which is this coming Friday, which I honestly feel like it could be this Friday. But again, Friday could come and go and we don't have anything. So mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much 
it on Pokemon Home. I feel like th- it feels like with Tears of the Kingdom released now, it's just weird that we've not had an announcement for Pokemon Home. Like they generally want to announce that it's going to be releasing on this date rather than just randomly shadow drop it and say, oh, it's the, the updates there now. I I feel like they want to do an announcement that it's coming. Yeah. So it's very bizarre. Yeah, I don't know how much room they would need because they could potentially drop it on like Monday, the update, and say like, oh, the update's coming this Friday. They could even do it Wednesday and say Wednesday. Maybe. Maybe. I, like I was saying to you off camera, I think the Spotlight Terror Raid event this week because the walking away guy and leaves a uh, two-week period for their Spotlight event ends tonight. So that Spotlight event, you're not going to be able to get walking away guy and leaves after this evening in your games. And that means that there will be room for a new Spotlight Terror Raid event happening this coming Friday, which could be quite kind of telling to whether or not we get home. They could do something quite special with it to say, you know, it might even be like a trio starter Pokemon or something that you get for doing this week. I don't know, mate. So we'll we'll see what happens. But I do feel quite confident that we're going to get something this week in regards to news, whether that would be about potentially DLCs or whether that that is Pokemon Home. It makes sense it'd be more Pokemon Home related because once you get the Pokemon Home release compatibility out of the way, then it paves the way for potentially like a trailer in June at some point for the DLCs. They would expect to be coming around September, October time, I think, for the Teal Mask at least anyway. Mm -hmm. Because we're not going to get... It's not going to be the same timeline as we had for Sword and Shield where we got Isle of Armor in June. There's no way we're getting the Teal Mask in June. No way. They've had no... There's been no promotion. It will be about September. It it's got to be September. I think so. And that kind of goes in line with, I think Platinum was the last game that we had dropped in a September month, in the month of September, I want to say. I like just off recollection, because September, I feel, had quite a few releases like of older generation games. But I, I, I can't remember the, the exact last one, but I feel like Platinum was definitely a September release. Might have even been an August release, a late August release, but who knows? But September definitely feels like it could be, could be there. And then there's enough time between September and then December for then um, the next one to come out after that. That's you. Excuse me. You. Excellent. Well, yeah. So I think we'll that's, see. We'll see, that's enough on that for now. <laughs> We'll have, to see. we'll have to see next week. But the, yeah. the problem is, like I say, you can just yeet around in circles, which we feel like we do repeat ourselves a lot, but it's, we have, very, it's a yeah. very frustrating position to be in, as you can imagine, so for a lot of fans. But anyway, moving on to some TCG news for a while. Uh, we had some leaked cards. So, spoiler warning now, if you don't, you've probably seen it if you follow the TCG anyway. But, Charlotte, what cards sell the most? What cards do everyone like? What Pokemon does everyone like? Charizard. So of course. And it's a Caterpie. <laughs> what <laughs> what card have they decided gone and you know made this weird? Oh, I don't know. This is maybe divisive. What do you think? What what do you think of this design? So for those of you listening, there's been a leaked, a leaked design artwork of a German um, Charizard. It's French. Oh, sorry, French. 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 Yeah. Um, Terrestrialize. A uh, gold star Charizard card. Um, yeah, a dog terror typing. Dog terror typing. Charizard. And it's a gold card, I believe, as well. I think it's like one of the, you know, the full gold cards, but it's coloured. So the Charizard's like coloured on it for those of you that aren't watching and listening. It almost looks fake, um, right? Because normally when yeah, you see got... fake cards, they're like this, but yeah. I'm pretty sure it's, it's weird real. because the terror hat that it's got for the dark that terror type it is exactly how it would be depicted in the games it's just got kind of a bit more artistic reference to it because it's colored a little bit differently but it's exactly the same as the terror hat that you would get in the game but it's a dark terror type charizard so whether or not that's got any links to anything to do with this theory about the teal mask and these new terror forms with the seven star terror raids or not, and then this drop in. I don't know. But interestingly, the card next to it, I don't see a lot of people talking about this in this leak. So there's two cards 
um, for those of you that aren't watching, there's the, the main card in screen, which is the leak card, which is the Charizard one. And then there's a card kind of half shot, like a quarter of it maybe showing on the screen. And it doesn't really show the actual art of the card, but it is a Dragonite. Because you can see the Dragonair in the little symbol, the evolution symbol, as the, the pre-evolution of the card. So that would indicate the Dragonite, which is kind of interesting, but the, you can't see any of the design on it. But obviously that is something that's leaked as well. Just looking at it earlier and picked up on that. So it, I thought that was quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. It is going to be very interesting to see where they go. This money Do you like the card process. design? It's, I don't know. I'd have to see it in person. I think it's one of those mm. that might look better in person. I mean, obviously this is a very blurry picture. There are some slightly clearer ones I have seen, but... Mm. It's hard to tell because it kind of looks a bit tacky, dare I say. But again, I'm not a big fan of the colours, like the that's wings and the colours yeah. with the the gold. It doesn't. Yeah, I know what you mean. Looks I'm not. Weird. I'm not. When I first saw it, I was like, ah, it looks a bit, a bit weird. So I think you're right. I think seeing it in person might make it look a little bit better. There's also a Cleffa card as well that got leaked from the French, like a French Cleffa card as well, which was a, like an alt art. Uh, clever. It's like a tiny little clever and a big kind of see like scenic background to it. Oh, um, did not see that. But, um, yeah, so that was another one that got leaked as well. So that's what I did see, and I just say this because it's really cute. On to on to Scott's. What do we call it? Fuck. Someone goodie in the bag. had a good goodie bag. Someone had a really good comment, and I bless them. I can't remember what they said. No, they had a really good name for it. I will find out. Um, but let me find it. Um, you just have to go. You have to you have to go on the, to the comments for the actual pod. I'm on my way. You fill time while um, I look for this. So anyway, while you find that, we're on to this section of Scott's part of the, the podcast. There's this Chandy card that looks really cute in the new one five one set that's coming out, and I just I, I want it because it looks very Let's cute. Look at it. Let me see. Oh, that is nice. I like that a lot, man. I just like that the art cool. style. Um, that is very cool. I like it. I just, I'm going to try and find this comment. I thought it was worth mentioning. Um, but no, uh, some other things as well. Um, there's a really sad story here, but we'll, we'll, no, we'll go for the not sad story, but we had um, girlfriend ripping up Pokemon cards last week. This poor guy had his collection in um, in his basement, and his basement flooded, and um, all of his cards are now oh, ruined. No, and so he had oh. loose cards. It gets worse. It gets worse. Oh. He had oh, sealed booster them. boxes as well, no. and I'm pretty no. sure this is a Charizard. He's got two Charizard collector's edition boxes here that are ruined by the water as well. I feel so bad for this man. I know, me woman. Too. That is horrendous. That is awful. Look at the state of those no. and that. It is brutal. Oh. That is horrible. The only good thing, not good thing. That is just that. That just yeah. look at the state of those. They're just destroyed. There's no recovering them either. You know. Like you were they're just common collectors boxes. You might be all right. You're probably all the, right with the. The problem the is, the, yeah, the, the packs are sealed. So you're, but you're gonna have. You're just left with loads of packs, which is no good. Defeats yeah. the object, and again with these, you'll probably be fine of anything that's in plastic packaging. But the whole but point of it having it sealed, sealed yeah. is fucked. It's ruined. Uh, but oh, I just felt so bad for this guy. I think I found the comment, by the way. I think the uh, the comment was, you'll tell me if this is right, Scott's Rocket Game Corner. Was that, that was the it. one? That was the one. What, was that it, is what, courtesy of Lumpy. So, thank Lumpy, you, Lumpy. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I do like it. Scott's Rocket Game Corner. Like yeah. It. So that's a good one for the, this one. I feel super bad for whoever they are. kind of feel like I want to donate like some stuff to them just to be like, but make sure that you put it Pie somewhere where it can't get water on it. Big yeah. high shelf upstairs, basically. Yeah. And when ah, brutal, brutal. 
something What's up next, mate? less sad. I mean, this is pretty much it, mm. but Pokemon um, released some so nice <laughs> big old uh, inflatables for your summer <laughs> for your summer holiday. <laughs> and I just thought it was hilarious. So, I, uh, you know. Sun's out, guns out. Sun's out, get guns your, uh, out. Get your big your, Magikarp uh, floaty. And there's a Psyduck uh, as well. That and man a Mantike. Like, like, who's sitting so on that? Small. A baby, maybe? A bubba? <laughs> what is that? Is it? That's what I mean. That guy is not, is not chilling out on that. He's going to have a hard time in the world over that. There is no so, way. Uh, for those of you that are listening, there's a, a collection of Pokemon themed, um, I guess, what what would we call them? Like sun, uh, they're not like, like sun pool, lounges. Or the, pool, the, the, like the, the floatable pool. Yeah, it's like a pool bed that you pool kind of things. inflate. And they've got a name as well. I should know it. Um, well, I can't remember them. Is it a, li- a Lilo? Yeah, is li- it? yeah, Lilos. But the, pool, yeah. the pool Lilos, but they're like, yeah. it's a Magikarp one. There's a Manti one, which is tiny. And there's some Pikachu and a Psyduck ring as well. I Pikachu just, rings look kind of cool. Yeah. I like those. But, again, but even, the Mantike one is tiny and there's there's a full grown block. Got a hold of it and it doesn't look like he's going to be this is gonna surf doing it. any. Yeah, he's going to be doing no floating on it. No right. floating yeah. whatsoever. The Magikarp one's cool though. But again, like, uh, you could probably lie on it. But it's not massive. It's not like long. It doesn't seem that long for like a full no. grown adult to lie on. Maybe for a maybe small person more like me. Kids. Yeah. You may be all right, mate. That big, I don't know, the Pikachu ring. Oh, it's got a Psyduck ring on top of it. That's why it looks a bit meatier. Mate, why is she wearing a, a Pikachu hat in this kind of weather? I mean, she must be boiling. A Magikarp hat, you mean? Yeah, sorry, yeah. She must be yeah. absolutely boiling, man. It might be a special swim hat. You know, those ones that the professionals oh, wear. Could you imagine? Yeah. Just rock up to a, a swim tournament <laughs> with like a magic hat on. Stretched eyes and everything. Oh. Did you ever used to have to wear those when oh, you used to go don't, like swimming? Don't, there's swimming, not, I, don't want, I don't want flashbacks. I, get, mate, I, I want to get PTSD, many, man. Man, I used to go like, my, I think like when I was really young, like, it was probably one of the things that my parents thought let's push him into swimming because I enjoyed swimming and I was was quite good at it uh, but I like five nights of the week I'd be swimming oh. like I didn't have a night off and I remember like oh man I remember coming home like some nights like it'd be Thursday and Friday and just crying with exhaustion being like I don't want to do it I hate it and just being like oh but it would be brutal mate and I used to have to wear those that those the swimming caps, you know, and they like, oh, they would just tear your hair and everything. I don't know how, I don't know how girls put them on because they have way more hair than boys. It used to hurt my hair so oh, much. Yeah, I think you'd be like, come out, lying around. Yeah, no, mate. You never, you never see those anymore, though. No, they don't wear you them. They must them. wear them still. Uh, like, I think they do in like the Olympics and stuff, but I never see anyone at the pool with them on. Not that I go to the pool that often now to do any. Any like actual swimming? Mm. But they're a funny, they're a funny old invention. I always think, yeah. Well, I feel like blogs just shave their heads now. Yeah, they, that'd be so much easier. If you were swimming, yeah, just be like, I'm not putting that on. Just, just shave it all off. Go bald. If you're a dedicated swimmer, I don't know how we got onto this. But yeah, a stupid <laughs> tangent. This is a weird tangent to end it off with, but. <laughs> You know, is that it? To, that is that is it, it this for week? today's episode? No, that's no, went too just quickly, flown mate. Flown by. I feel like I've got way too much waffle left in me to cut it off now and finish now. Is there nothing else that we've got to talk about? I tell you, I did find a little. It was almost breaking news before the pod when we started recording, and I haven't included it. But there was a, a news article. I couldn't get it translated though because it was on Yahoo News in Japan about um, six hundred. Um, there was 600 products worth of TCG that got stolen from a Japanese TCG store, no like way. 600 individual like booster boxes and stuff like that items that got because um, of the the crisis that's gone on over there at the minute with the the lack of stock, and someone's hijacked a shop and uh, taken all of this this TCG product over there, which is pretty bad. It's brutal. The Yakuza. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Dealing with Pokemon cards. <laughs> nah. But yeah, it's pretty bad. 
you know, over there. It makes you think what's going to happen for, like, the World Championships over there, because you're going to get, like, an influx of, like, Pokemon fans into Japan at that time of year. There's going to be nothing and, left. <laughs> yeah, but if they're going to have these, like, restriction, restrictions on, like, cards, you know, like, it's going to be pretty, pretty sad for a lot of players that are going over there. With the hope in mind of being like, wow, we're going to Japan. This is the home of Pokemon. This is where I want to pick up loads of like Pokemon cards because it's kind of cool. We're here for the like maybe their first time. Maybe this is the only time they get to go there. And then they're going to be kind of let down a little bit by the the lack of products that they can pick up. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll be resolved by then. I'm hoping it will. I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they can find a way to print it, print more. <laughs> yes. Yes. Just get more get more ink and card. More cardboard. It it seems pretty I mean, it seems like something we could we could probably like, you know, sort out if we were there. Yeah. Get Dan on get Dan on the cardboard orders, get Steve to get some more print ink printers, hire a few more people to pack the cards, although they're probably all done by machines anyway, so just keep the machines on all night. Get a watchman in, get Nigel to come and watch do the night shift, you know. Keep the machines on twenty four seven. Put more coal in those burners. <laughs> We're not stopping. Get the generators we on. Need more money. Ah. More money. <laughs> See, I'm doing a good job of dragging this out, mate. And I know you're sitting there just like waiting for that moment to be like, "See you later, everyone." <laughs> and I'm not giving you it. I'm sorry. I'll let you do it. I'll let you do it. It's what? been fun, mate. Thanks so much. It's been fun again. Good. Got another nice. It has actually uh, flown by on. an hour. Thank you. This is my mm. Teddy Fresh hoodie. Mm, nice. For, for ages. I love tie dye stuff. If you, ever, if you ever want to buy me a gift, just just get like a tie dye, anything tie dye. Okay. Um, How about a homemade tie dye? I don't care, mate. I love tie dye stuff, man. It's awesome. <laughs> anything brightly coloured is a bit of me. So it's a bit of me, mate. Random, 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 random tangent. The Newcastle kit I've, they I've, had I've on, on the weekend. You, I've you in now. <laughs> the Newcastle kit you had on the weekend was actually really nice. So you know, the blue one, the blue with the, one. Yeah, the yeah. gold stripes, the dark one. Yeah, nice. it is a nice, nice kit. I actually got that one as well. Damn, uh, you got them all. Yeah, it's nice. I've got no, I haven't got the home kit this season. Uh, I only got the two away ones. Yeah, so I got the home kit from last season, but then I got. Um, Isn't got the Saudi one the third on. kit? Yeah, the the that that one is the third kit. Yeah, so the the blue one's the away one. Oh, nice. And, and then, yeah, that's the three of them. But supposedly, from what I've heard, they're going to keep the white and green one for next year again. So interesting. Interesting. Right. Yeah. I said it there because we're almost in an hour and ten minutes. So it's good. Wow. It's, it's, that has could not do this. felt like an hour and ten minutes. It actually hasn't. It's weird. It's no. very weird. Um, you've got to plug thank you so much to everyone tuning in commenting every single week and yes. supporting the pod it is like I can't say how much we both appreciate it if you're on Spotify or if you're on iTunes and you've got two seconds spare do leave us a rating on those platforms because it does massively help we say it every week but it really would mean a lot to someone, us if you could someone just, has yet uh, to do it I could do it myself but that would be cheating so be know. the first person and then you will be forever we will shout, you will shout you out moment. If we can, yeah. I'm not sure if you can see there that. There you go. Right, but just do it, please. Yeah, we'll read the re review out. We'll read it out. Yes. But no, yeah. appreciate it. Let us know what you think it. of... We changed the setup slightly this week because yeah. um get some high quality, but we might mix it up a bit, change things um, as they go, but we're experimenting. So, But this is our eighth episode now, so, you know, we're rolling. We're rolling now. Number eight. Number yeah. eight. Good. I'm enjoying it. Excellent. So... Thank you very much for watching, guys. Um, we will see you. Oh, Cordy's coming to say goodbye. We will see you in next week's episode. Is there anything you'd like to say, Lee, before we say goodbye? Just, just, just. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs>